um, Nikola Tesla, the P. P. Peterson and Nikola Tesla Black Ops. Yep. Is one of them is about Black Jesus, where there's a sentient being appearing in Africa. Yep. And I just want to know if you know any more information you would share with us, because I thought that was very captivating to me, and I just wanted more information on yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, the Black Thank Jesus you, Chris. story. The Black Jesus story was uh, probably one of the most shocking things I ever heard. Um, it came from my insider uh, Jacob. I call him that in the book, who actually was working for the Rothschilds and still does and um, also is a whistleblower who doesn't really do what they want but continues to work for them because he feels like there's some very serious extraterrestrial threats to Earth and that what they're doing is very necessary to protect us. So the story goes that in the 1960s there was a black man uh, in Africa who came in with abilities complementary to those of Jesus. And uh, he was performing miracles. He was starting to get people to listen to what he had to say. And the cabal tried to kill him. And, you know, they could shoot him in the head and his skull would just regenerate and the flesh would grow back and uh, he was fine. And, uh, you know, so the crazy story that I heard, which, and, and remember, I was told at the time that if I disclosed this, that I would be uh, killed, and I ended up putting it in the book anyway. Um, but the story was that this guy, uh, you know, they finally said, okay, we're going to bring you to the United Nations and share your message with the world. Let's get you on this flight. They, they bring him on this flight, and instead of bringing him to the United Nations, they shot him repeatedly and then actually had some kind of meat grinder device uh, and basically like a bandsaw, I guess, and sawed up his body into a whole bunch of pieces, put him in these very, uh, very like radioactive shielded uh, containers, and then had all these fighter jets dock with the plane and fly his body parts to all corners of the world, where then these containers... Um, uh, turned them into ash, and uh, they thought that maybe this would defeat him, like that his body somehow, the tissue was necessary, so if they destroyed all the tissue in all these places across the world, maybe they could defeat him. Well, he then regenerated in, in their offices and was fully fine, fully intact, but the sad part is that he said, you know, I, uh, you guys so badly do not want me to be here that I am not going to be able to do any more. You're going to get what you want, but bear in mind that in the future, many others like me will be coming, and when they do, you will not be able to stop us. Wow. Wow. Now, well, that's that is all I know. But the sad part is that he said, you know, many others like me will be coming, and when they do, you will not be able to stop us. Many others like me will be coming, and when they do, you will not be able to stop us. Many others like me will be coming, and when they do, you will not be able to stop us. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Harakha Ha Kodash, and double honors to the apostles and the elders, the bishops of Great Millstone, the top men of Great Millstone. Also, a, a sincere shalom to you, other elders. Uh, in various camps scattered abroad, you Akim uh, scattered abroad as well, and your few sisters. Anyway, I want to go into this intriguing story. Um, a younger brother sent me, and another brother did a video on it. GMS Ha Kabar Darak 144. Um, that's where I got it from. I don't know if other brothers did the video on it. This story is uh, going taking place uh, with this uh, Jake who is a, what we call an angel. You know, I don't know how true the story is, but there's a lot of credible witnesses to this. And these are examples that I believe the Most High has, has sent us. Now, I'll try to make this quick. Uh, the, the stories like this, I'll try to make quick. This man was supposed to be by the name of Simeon, Simeon Toko. Okay? That was, and they, what they did is they called him Black Jesus. His name was Simeon, Simeon Toko, born in about, I believe, 1918. And I believe that was the beginning of the First World War. 
I may be wrong, but I think of that specifically. Anyway, um, he supposedly had a ministry. Um, but just to get to the point, you heard the intro. Um, I'm going to read a couple of things that was um, stories about him. Um, also, you know, they, as you saw in the intro, they had some stories about they tried to kill him. But I'll read this one as well. It says, on January 4th, 1959, witnesses attest that many cherubim and seraphim emerged and held off Belgian uh, co colonial army, basically talking about the chariots and the, um, the angels. Citizens of Leopoldville saw an army of about a thousand angels, non-terrestrials, which means you will have I don't know why they say non-terrestrials. You would have terrestrials and you would have extraterrestrials. Right? Um, you have celestial beings and terrestrial beings. So they had spiritual power. Very muscular bodies imposing these human looking beings but with supernatural powers demonstrating an extraordinary force. For example, a witness saw one of them on the road uh let me go on. One of them on the road sweeping a five-ton truck with his hand. Right? <laughs> this is what the scriptures speak of. Okay? This is an uplifting story. Right? To us. This is a faith-boosting story. Okay? Belgian soldiers opened fire on these angels. But to no effect, colonial army was in a panic and disorder. Angels disappeared and suddenly had an appearance and appeared like the uh, the um, the chariots. They disappear and reappear. There's stories of that now that's happening, right? According to the African natives that day, Simeon Toko had unleashed his army. Fourth on the January fourth was a day of celebration of today in Kenosha. Right, so he was from Angola. So when you go to Angola, Africa, that was uh, uh, the west part, parts of Africa. That would be where the Israelites dwell. Okay. A year after the extraordinary event. Okay, it says a year after the extraordinary event, Congo uh, became an independent country for the Belgians and forced to leave their rich uh, colonies of Congo. Right, so let me get a little, let me go to a little more of this uh, story. Um, because there was a lot to this story, I don't want to, um, he, I, I also go into the fact that, that he also uh, told the, um, what do you see, he told the, uh, what are those people called? I'm trying to think of the nationality. They were, they were, they were Edomites. Um, and he told them to leave. He told them to leave. You got ten years to <laughs> get out and leave and, and leave. And and they left, but they set them they set them back up. Um, the port the Portuguese, I believe. Well, let me read this part too. It says, using a brief biblical quotation, Simeon Toko gave Pope John look like the Roman numerals, I think twenty second or twenty third. Pope John the 23rd uh, to understand that what the Pope had found in the note written by Lucia dos Santos was true fearing who it was now living among the most disdained people on earth the Pope contacted the Portuguese dictator Antonio de Salazar in the plane sat a Catholic priest and members of Salazar's secret police, including the pilot and co-pilot, and, and this, these all, what is it saying? Is the Pope, the uh, the the dictator, the pilot, the co-pilot? They was all in conspiracy to kill this man, right? This angel. It said their mission was to fly out over the Atlantic Ocean, and after about an hour's distance, push Simeon Toko out of the plane into the deep sea the moment the um, 
pied agent, agents rose to subdue him and carry him out there out there murder Simeon Toko stood up and ordered the plane to stop the aircraft stopped in midair it stood still not advancing an inch nor rose or fell backwards <laughs> the crew was stricken by panic the priest could hardly breathe and hoarsely huffed out this desperate prayers so who was he praying to Okay, who was this priest praying to, man? It wasn't to the Most High God. This proves that they're not of the Most High, right? Simeon lifted his eyes and hands toward the heaven, and after a short prayer, he ordered the plane to move again. At once, the plane started moving. Right? So that's another story. I know there's so many stories on this. There's another story, and these were people who had, uh, uh, you know witnessed the accounts of, of these things happening. People wrote it in books, right? People were threatened, right? There was another account where they killed him and put him on an autopsy table and cut his heart out while it was beating, right? And they figured he was dead and they come back again, he sits up. This is probably where the Hollywood gets in the movies with talking about the dead rising. Okay, the dead, but the, the dead in the Most High, the dead in Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, is going to rise, right? Which are, are rising, but ultimately, when the, when Yahweh Shai returns, this is what this, this is talking about. When Yahweh Shai returns, the dead uh, in Yahweh Shai is going to rise first, right? So you're going to have a lot of what you call Simeon Tokos. I, I believe that's his name, right? So I wouldn't be right if I didn't get a scripture. Isaiah 47 and 3, for the nakedness shall be uncovered, talking about Babylon, right? Let me go to Isaiah 47 and 1 to get to the meat in it. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon, sit in the ground, there is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstones and grind the meal, uncover thy lots, make the bear the leg, uncover thy pass over uncover thy thigh, pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, thy shame, shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, is his name, the Holy One of Israel. So you have, you have the spiritual, you have the spiritual, and you have the fleshly. You have the spiritual power versus the fleshly power. Right? You have the spiritual power and let's say the fleshly power versus the spiritual power, right? This is why we're going to call it that because the spiritual power is going to definitely overtake it. So that's why it's, it's, it's versus, right? Trying to come against the spiritual power. You're not... See, Esau's uh, fleshly power is his military, his tanks. But the top elites believe in spirituality too. On the left-hand side, Ephesians 6 and 10. Uh, we wrestle against not flesh but the principalities of rulers of darkness they literally talk to the, the uh, um, spiritual world right so you have a left hand spiritual side versus the right hand spiritual side but the society is dumbed Jake down so horribly that Jake can't believe in spirituality no more and this brings me to why I believe uh, Johanna is set up and they're, uh, they're pushing that, that max on a high level Right? Is it to subdue that spiritual power? I don't know. I'm not trying to go too far. But there has to be something to that. To why the, the so called blacks and the Native Americans are being encouraged to accept this. Right? 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians uh, 15. Uh, in 51 behold I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep well let me go on to 50 now this I say brethren that the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh neither doth corruption inherit incorruption behold I show you a mystery we shall not asleep all asleep but we shall be changed right that reminds me of the movie The Matrix when Neo he got shot up 
You know, although the agents was spiritual about the filthy world, but Neil, when he got shot up, and he started believing, and then he stood up, and then he stopped the bullets. See, people don't think, everybody think of the fleshly world. People don't think there's something greater than this world they live in. Just, it's because you chase that dollar, you chase that money. You have that love of the money. You have the love of your your new car and your no, your nice house and your your fake relationships. It says to be changed is to exchange one thing to another to transform. Right. That's all I have on that. You know, if you don't understand the spirituality, this video is not for you. Nor is this true for you. You know, and we say at Great Millstone, the hundred percent truth. That's all I have on that shallow one.